Hello, beautiful souls. Today's episode is so, so good. And before we jump in, I have some exciting news to share. If you've ever wondered where you're blocking money, this is for you. I've created a free quiz to diagnose your money wounds so you can heal them and unblock yourself to receive more money. Just go to moneywoundsquiz.com and answer six quick questions to get your insanely accurate and potent results. And if you're loving my vibe and want to work one-on-one to call in more feminine energy wealth, I would love to hear from you. You can shoot me a DM on social media or go to emilywilcox.com to learn more. Welcome back to the M Makes Money Show. And I'm so thrilled because we have a special guest here today. We have Mandy Podlesny. And Mandy has such an incredible story that I'm really excited to dive into. Um, When she started college and was dating and meeting new friends, what she had in mind was kind of her coming of age story. But instead, she ended up spending time in between classes at doctor's offices, taking medication, having surgery, filling out insurance claims. And basically, medical professionals kind of shrugged this off as like a mystery disease. And Mandy had to jump through supplements, detoxing, diets, trying to reduce inflammation, something still didn't feel right, and essentially turned into a 12-year battle for her health, which included more than five surgeries over the course of two years. And through rigorous exploration, biohacking, Mandy discovered the healing power of ketosis, shifting her thinking, her dietary choices, making lifestyle changes for chronic illness. And since 2016, Mandy has helped others visualize their own roadmaps of success, whether they are keto or burrito, to drop the weight and fix their relationship with food, all while learning to love themselves exactly as they are. So Mandy, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. That was a powerful intro. I appreciate that. And I just got went went right back to that moment. So um, of just all of that, and I just yeah, crazy <laughs> to hear it back, you know? <laughs> Isn't it? Our bios are so funny. Like, damn, that's me. That's my life. I I wow, girl. Good I did job. That. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm I'm so excited to dive into this because I you know, I talk a lot about money and business growth and, and all of this. And um my husband did a big group program with a pretty well-known kind of coach a couple years ago. And I sort of did it along with him. And what was amazing in there, there were over a thousand people in this program and about half really realized that they needed to focus on their health as their primary goal through the program. And it was such a good reminder to me, like when we don't have our health, we have nothing. Like, how can you possibly say like, oh, my health is failing me, but actually I'm going to go through this group program and just focus on money and business. Like you can't. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but it's like here you were, you know, thinking you were going to have all of these just sort of quintessential experiences, leaving home, going to college. And when your health is off, it's like that has to be the number one priority. How can college be a priority? How can dating be a priority? And so I love that you've made it through and that you're now helping other women. But is there anything else that you just wanted to like add to to that introduction? Uh, No, that was really good. I just I just love the conversation that we're going in because I think I mean, I still actually struggle with that. Like you're actually like kind of re reminding me like, Hey, if you don't have your health, you know, and I think people and people that have chronic disease would relate to this. Like you just kind of like have a new normal. Yeah. And sometimes like I forget, like, cause we all, Oh, I'm getting a little emotional. Uh, <laughs> um, sometimes we just like, well, I have this goal and I want to achieve it and I got to go and we're programmed as well. Like from our just society that, oh, well, you just had a baby. Good luck. You only have six weeks, like, you know, that, or just like, oh, well, no one cares if your body's inflamed and like you chronically are fatigued and you can't keep your eyes open past 2 PM. And like, like your boss doesn't care about that. Like you have a job to do. So sometimes you just have to like do what it takes to kind of bandaid the solution. Yeah. And that's hard and tough 
to do um, and manage. So I relate to anyone struggling. And then if you're not struggling, like be really, really grateful that you're not and do everything that you can to like protect your body and honor your body and like do the things to be as healthy and hopefully wealthy as you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know. So do you find, do you tend to work with clients that are more in the crisis mode, so to speak, with their health, um, where they're, they also have some sort of mystery illness, mystery diagnosis, or does it tend to be clients that um, have just prioritized other things in their life? And then finally they're saying, you know what, like, I'm just so ready to be a different size, or I'm just really ready to feel different in my body. And like, now is the time that I'm, that I'm ready to prioritize it. Yeah. I work with women, a lot of women that should all over themselves. I mean, we all should all over ourselves, whether it's business or weight loss or whatever, but, um, at some point, but yeah, most of them are like, Oh, well, I know that I like, should be going to the gym or like, I know that I should really lose this weight or they blame other things. Like quarantine has been like, the hugest eye opener for a lot of people as much as like that 2020 sucked and we all want to forget it. It actually is a very big blessing, I think. And if you look at it from that perspective, it's like, okay, well, I've been snacking, I've been home, but like at some point you have to stop blaming like yeah. the quarantine yeah. or outside sources or stress or whatever. So women come to my world and they're just like, they're in that blame thing. So I have to shift them from like blaming to accepting responsibility to having that long, hard talk with themselves in the mirror. Like, Hey, I really got to get it together. And if I don't like, I like, I'm probably either going to die or just continue to struggle. And like the struggle, what I remind them is like, it's self-inflicted and you don't need to struggle. Yeah. You can do this simply and easily, you know? Yeah, totally. It, there's so much empowerment, even, even in changing the, the verbiage in your own mind and your own story around, well, it's just because of quarantine. It's just because of this. It's just because of that to saying, I'm not choosing to prioritize my diet right now. I'm not choosing to prioritize my health. Like the nothing's actually changed in those two scenarios, except that in one scenario, you don't have the power. And then in the other one you do. Right. Yeah. And so it's like taking back our power and saying like, oh, I, okay. Yeah. I actually haven't made it a priority. Yeah. Okay. Well, that means that I can make it a priority if I want to. Yay. Look at me and my power. I love that. And a lot of women like come to me too. And then they're like, so like they blame themselves or like feel like they have to like justify it to me. And I know that they're more or less doing it for themselves yeah. and then just kind of being like, a little embarrassed or whatever, but like, I just say like the past does not exist at all because what can you do? You can't change yeah. your current circumstance at all for one. And for two, instead of being like mad at yourself for where you are, get really, really excited that you can write a new story of whatever you want. And there's no difference. The past is still the past, but you could either be where you are and be mad at yourself, or you can pick up the pen and rewrite it. So yeah. I offer that like, Hey, forget it. Let's move on and do something awesome. Yeah. Did you ever imagine that you would be an entrepreneur? Um, yes. I, <laughs> I just didn't know that I, if you told me I'd be a nutrition coach and affiliates for other things and like what I'm doing now, I'd be like, no, I knew from a really young age, like do, going through a lot of um, like family stuff that I always wanted. I always said like, I want to buy my dad a boat. I had no idea how I was going to do it. And I always, if I like look back on it, I always felt like the nine to five was like, not my thing. Like, no, yeah. I'm just not employable. So I knew I wanted to do something and make a lot of money. And I knew that like, the workforce was not going to like provide the massive amounts of wealth that I wanted. Yeah. But if you would have told me then like I'd be doing what I'm doing now, I'd be like, that's weird. No, <laughs> but yeah. <keep> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Then life takes you in that direction. And yeah. I think ultimately, I mean, it's the same reason that I stepped into coaching. It was like the thing that transformed my life. I think you just naturally 
want to help other women do the same. And yeah. for me, it was more like money mindset and learning how to be more in the feminine energy because I just, you know, worked really, really hard and built these six and seven figure businesses in the masculine energy until I wanted to just burn everything to the ground, you know? <laughs> so funny Uh, because that's kind of where I am right now I am so masculine and then like I'm like a fish out of water like learning about like feminine energy and like all of that and I am loving it like I'm very I feel very awkward and very in that what our mentor Melanie says like in that void and I'm just like oh, that's old, but this is new and oh I can oh all I have to do is just like relax and like magic's been happening and it's like oh, wow. Like it doesn't have to be so hard. Like I don't have to answer every comment and like be in my messages and clear and do all of that. Like, holy moly. So yeah, yeah. (laughs) it is. It can be so freeing, but it also can be so disorienting too. Right. Because typically, um, us like high functioning, high achieving women, like we really placed a lot of our identity in the masculine energy. Like I know how to get shit done. I'm a to-do list master. I'm so, I I used to call my, I used to say that productivity was one of my superpowers. And like, it was like, I could just get an unreasonable amount of stuff done in like a short period of time, but I didn't understand the energetic toll. Yeah. And I didn't know how to have those spurts of masculine action and then flip into the feminine receiving. Yeah. And so it is weird when all of a sudden magic starts happening and you didn't have to do anything for it. Cause you're like, but wait, what? Yeah, no, it's so weird. And it's so funny that you said like, I'm burning my, like I wanted to burn my businesses to the ground. Cause I literally just transitioned my email from my old, old one to like mandyp.com. And I'm like, I have to go like today's the day. I feel like I'm like, it's about to like pop off. Like I'm just starting over again and just evolving. And it's like messy and awesome and weird and just like all the things. I don't know. So if anybody's struggling or going through (laughs) it, just know it's totally normal, which I'm like, wait, uh, things are normal. Cause I've been just doing this by myself, you know? So it's just like, wait, so you cry in your office corner, like every other, like, month or something like and it's totally fine and ah like it's just crazy like just entrepreneurship in general what a journey you know yeah absolutely and for everyone but like this is why I believe so much in paid mentorship and why I love masterminds because I think you know for all entrepreneurs but like especially for women because like our superpower in our our ability to be in the divine feminine is really predicated on us feeling supported. Um, And how can we do that when we're not in community? Yeah. And then often we get in community and then we have to heal our sisterhood wounds because we get into community in our masculine energy. And we're just like, I'm going to be the star of this. I'm going (laughs) to be the coach's favorite person. I'm going to make the most money. And then it's like, okay, still in the masculine. And then when we learn how to actually be vulnerable around other women, how to celebrate their successes, how to be seen in our messy imperfection, then it does become this superpower. And all of a sudden we feel like we're not doing it alone, even if we're in a home office by ourselves. And then the game changes. Yeah, no, for sure. And I love, I mean, I've, it's funny that that's coming up too. Cause like I've paid for coaches and like masterminds and like certain things, but like, it was always from like a masculine place. Like, Oh, well I'm going to pay this person to get me where I want to go. Cause I think that I have this, like, they have this like magical key or like this, I'm going to look behind the curtain and see the secret to success. When in reality it wasn't an inspired decision. It was just like, a, Oh, I hope this gives me what I need thing. And now I'm making all of these decisions. Like, I won't spend any money unless it's like truly from a feminine, like, okay, I need to calibrate to that person, not that person solving my issues, you know? And I think that we forget that. Um, I mean, how many like courses have we all bought and not even opened the login? Like, you know, and it's just that portion of 
Mandy life is over and I'm doing things like more inspired and it's very, very weird to feel, or un- I don't want to say weird. I want to say it's like uncomfortable yeah. or different. And I know that it's like a good thing. Like it's yeah. just stretching me and making those decisions. So I just love this love hate journey. <laughs> I can yeah. Allow to yeah. Explain it. <laughs> yeah. I I'm so thankful that you're giving a voice to this. Cause I think it's something that doesn't get talked about enough. And it's really like some people call it the void or integration or embodiment. And it's basically like this time period where we've learned a concept and that concept has um, made us want to do something differently, which means that we've destroyed certain structures Mm -hmm. or old habits or old ways of being, right? So we've created space for the new to come in, Mm -hmm. but then the new isn't quite here yet or the new feels really wobbly. And so it can feel very disorienting because of course there was something comfortable about the old way. And now we've just burned those boats. We've destroyed that old way. And the new way is not fully here yet. It's not fully integrated. It's not fully embodied into our own lives. We can, we might be able to even tell somebody else about it, right? Because we understand it logically, but it's not, it's not so solidly in our body that it's just part of who we are yet. And it is uncomfortable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very, very hashtag very, growth. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, so let's let's talk about like some of some of this growth in the context of your business and money, since you know I'm all about talking numbers. Um, and we can do this a few different ways. Like you can sort of say like year by year, here's where I was, and here's where I am, or. Um, we can just jump right into like what you're earning now and kind of what your goals are. Yeah. I mean, when I first started my business, um, I was on disability. I I was recovering from my last surgery and I, um, what I tried, (laughs) it's crazy. I, because I was so anti like network marketing and I, hate thought it was like a pyramid thing and like no one made any money. And I was really, really embarrassed that I was even like interested in a product, but like this chick kept posting horribly. Like, I don't know she got me somehow. So horrible marketing kind of works sometimes, but I prefer to not, but whatever it happened, you know? So, but I was like kind of against it for that exact reason. I'm like, Oh, do I have to do that? Like, I don't want to, but I tried this product and it truly changed my life. And when I tell you that I couldn't keep my eyes open and I was like, so sick, like this changed my life in 24 hours. Like it was insane. So I was like, okay, what is this? This is amazing. Tried it. And I was like, I'm never doing the business. I'm never doing the business. But like, I couldn't afford the product because I was on a fixed income, mind you living in Brooklyn, New York, one of the most expensive cities in the world um, with three other people trying to just like, recover. And, um, I was doing like a little bit of social media stuff for people at the time too, like on the side, but then this product changed my life. And like, they kept hounding me, like, you should do it. Like you're really good at social, like blah, blah, blah. And I just didn't do social media for like, I just was kitschy or funny, like on my thing, I wasn't like doing a business or anything. And I was getting that stuff on Upwork. And finally I was like, okay, well, I want to get my product for free. So I'm just going to do like the free product program. And then all of a sudden it just blew up and I was like, holy crap. So I invested in the kit, got it, started it, sold the kit in like two days. And it just kind of like took off. And then I started to actually take it seriously. So I went from like being on disability, coming off of disability that first year, I think I made like 30 grand and then Um, I earned like a free car and then I just, my very first time, like, I didn't even know that I made this and like, I'm really learning how to like be better with my numbers and like Mm. all that. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm just more of a collect money, spend money type. So when I got my 
like profit and loss and everything. And I hit six figures. I was like, holy shit. Like, sorry, I don't know if you can swear on here, but I was like, oh my God. I was like, wow. Like, you know, like it was just amazing, but like I spent it all. And then now I like, and then the year, the next year I did the same thing and like way better managed my money. So for two years, I, um, did that six figures. And then last year I kind of dipped down. I think I did like 80. And then this year I'm really trying to crush, like, I really 500 K is like my goal, but I don't know if it's like (laughs) realistic or not. I don't know. And I, again, I'm playing in these energies and like, so anybody that's like a newbie and scared of your goals. Um, but I started with the network marketing, but mind you, so it was like network marketing. And then I, most recently last year into this year, I've just really developed my like coaching and my prove it. My ketone business has been product business has been a little bit on the back burner. And now I'm just yeah. really double down on coaching. Cause if I can do that well in network marketing at paid yeah. commissions and sell all of that, there's really no reason that I can't sell Mandy's coaching packages. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Um, wow. and, and thanks for like, saying your goal, like, and I saw the look on your face where you're like, I'm a little bit afraid to say this out loud, but it's 500 K. And it's like, man, you know, if we can't say it out loud, um, I think that's a good litmus test for how much resistance we have. Yeah. And it's like, you know, so much of the work that I do for myself personally, and also with my clients is like, around money mindset and healing money wounds and that kind of stuff. And it's like, you know, there is the allowing of it, but then the reason that I like talking about money is because sometimes we're not even aware of where there's resistance or where there's limiting beliefs because we don't just talk about money around the dinner table, the way that we talk about other topics. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, you maybe don't have too many places where you have the opportunity to say like, hey, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm really holding the vision for making 500K this year. Yeah. And like trying that on and seeing how that feels. And, and maybe that brought up something for you where you can look at that and say, huh, okay, like why did I feel a constriction in my chest? What was that? Let me journal on that or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so you know, I'm so new to like learning and doing that. Like, and it, and I mean, like I've done like the, like the reading, the money things and like the energy and like, um, a couple people that do it, like, you know, read the books and whatever. And it's just like, I've always been, I've always dipped back into like the practical. Right. And that's the masculine. And like, I'm just really trying to build the belief system around that. Like, yeah, my heart dropped. And I said, 500 K I was like, <gasps> wait, But in the same breath, I'm like, but I can actually do that. It's June. Yeah. Yeah. Like why, like what would really, like, I felt it physically like, oh, that's weird to say out loud, but you're right. Like one, I don't say it out loud at all to who like, oh, I'm going to make 500 K. Like that's yeah, not a good space to like, to start trying to tell all of your friends (laughs) that you're trying to make half a million dollars in a year, but on the same breath, like you still have to do that and believe it. And yeah, and, you know, so. Yeah, totally. And, and, you know, I used to try to do the money work through just like affirmations and things like that. And what I found is that like our subconscious mind always wins, right? So it's like the thing that we're most afraid of looking at is actually like the thing that will set us free because like the affirmations will work but they'll only work as long as there's alignment between the subconscious and conscious mind. And so it's like, you may want to have a journal prompt that says like, I'm scared to make 500 K because. And I think sometimes we're, we're afraid to go into anything that feels negative. Like, Ooh, why would I want to write down all my fears? Why would I want to say why I don't think I can make 500K? But it's like, yeah, but that's actually the path to clearing out all of the resistance. Yep. Because you can't turn the light on if it's not dark. (laughs) Right. 
Like, right. but, and I, I mean, it, it just, I mean, even before we popped on the podcast, the re- recording, like translating this conversation to like weight loss, which like I'm good at, it's like, okay, people are just like avoiding, it, avoiding, it, avoiding, like looking in themselves in the mirror, like, hey, like I'm actually fully responsible for this. It's okay to be where you are. Like, but we got to look at it. We got to talk about it. Like the meal plan's not going to solve your problem. Understanding why you're not doing the meal plan is going to solve the problem. And it's a lot deeper than just like, oh, I'm stressed out and I gained weight. Like yes. what's going on there? You know? Yes. It's the perfect analogy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the person who's just focusing on the numbers on the scale and focusing on what's on their plate, but yeah. then can't sustain it. And it's like, okay, let's look at what you don't want to look at. Yeah. What's your relationship with yourself? How do you, what do you say to yourself inside your own head that you would never say out loud when you look in the mirror, right? And, and it's the same, it's the same with money. It's like the, the resistance is there, whether we like it or not, the old money wounds, the old limiting beliefs, like they're there, but, but we have this tendency to want to just stick our fingers in our ears and go like, la, 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 la. Or actually what we do is we put our AirPods in our ears and it's like, I am already a millionaire. I am enjoying the wealthy life. And it's like your subconscious mind is going, no, you're not. No, 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 no. And so the affirmations actually don't work until we do the subconscious stuff because the subconscious mind, in in a way, it's like actually um, strengthening those other beliefs because it's giving it something to respond to. Yeah. I'm a millionaire. No. He, what, what one right there was the subconscious mind that was like, no, you're not. So you're actually strengthening it by not looking at it. Yeah, exactly. I like that journal prompt. It's like, why, what did you, it was like, why am I afraid to make 500 K? Like yeah. amazing. Um, just dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sure with your clients, you probably do something like that too. Right. Like, um, it, you know, like, what don't I love about my body? Okay, fine. Like, just say it all once and for all. So now we can like process through it. I love that. Yeah, I did a journal prompt today. It was like, if I already had the body that I desired and a great relationship with food, what I need to do, say, be or have in order to do that. But I like that kind of having to take it negative first, because if you create that positive first, you're, you're like, Oh, well, I don't even think that's actually possible. So yeah. 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 And it's like, now there's like a name for it. Maybe there always has been, but I feel like it's finally like gone mainstream, which is like spiritual bypassing. And I like unknowingly spiritually bypassed so much for so many years. And it's funny because like, now I look back on it and it's like, you know, I believe that like time is an illusion and we all like we all get what we need when we need it. Right. So it's like, clearly I wasn't ready for it at that time, but it's like, once I did the inner child healing, which I didn't even know was a thing then. (laughs) Right. Um, and that was wild in and of itself. Right. Like I'm working with a coach and she's like, write down like all of the, like, your just your list of like betrayals for your dad. I'm like, what? But (laughs) You know, it's like, (laughs) yeah, like you just get all of the crap out and then it creates all of this space for so much, you know, great new belief systems to come in. What's your favorite like way to heal this? I like NLP. Um, I practice that and then I do it with um, a coach as well to heal all of that crazy stuff that comes up. Um, And then I like journaling and then meditating, but what do you like? I like yeah. to get out perspectives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I kind of like it all too. And, and I, I ebb and flow, you know, and I think for a while I used to be when I was more in the masculine energy, like it felt like, um, 
this race that I was running. Right. So it was like, I wanted to like optimize my performance. So like, what if I'm reading this book right now and I'm working with this coach and I'm like listening to these affirmations and I was trying to like, you know, just sprint. And now what I've realized is like, okay, money mindset work, just like everything else in life, it's a marathon. And Mm -hmm. it's like, how do I actually enjoy the race while I'm running it? And so I really just like let my intuition lead the way, but I tend to, you know, you and I have the same coach, Melanie Ann Lair, and like, I love listening to everything that she's put out on Money Mindset. Like that's been really activating for me right now. So I'm doing a lot of that. Um, And then it may, you know, and then it may change, right? Where I'm like just super into something else, or I feel inspired to buy a crystal and, you know, it's like, it doesn't have to be hard. Um, but I think it's like being intentional also with like recognizing what is going on in our subconscious. Yeah. Because it's like, if we can just get it to our conscious and be aware of it, then like we've done 90% of the work. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And I think when I first started this whole journey, I thought it was like this mystical, magical world of like, once you figure it out, like the world's going to open and the heavens are going to like beam down on you and you're going to float like a fairy. And it's like, actually, no, it's just like crying a little bit. and like being like, oh, okay. Like today I did a meditation this morning and I was like crying and then I was like laughing and I was just like, I'm just trying to get my mood right for the morning. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like, you know, and I, I used to in my masculine and unconsciously or like just didn't have the awareness like that actually is feeling. Cause I, I just have a tendency to like tear up and cry for no reason. And now I'm just like, well, this is just who I am. And I did my human design. So now I'm really just like, I get it. I am just who I am now. (laughs) Yes. Um, you and me both. So I had a really negative story around myself and like the fact that I couldn't control my emotions better, like my whole life. Oh, wow. And I just felt like I I'd never wanted to cry. And so then when I cried, I just was like, oh, here I go. And like, I wish I could stop these tears right now. It didn't really matter like whether they were happy tears or sad tears or whatever. But I also think like because I was suppressing it, it's like it would come out like in just tense moments, but even like in business conversations where you're like, Oh my God, I don't want to be emotional right now. What's wrong with me? Um, and we were talking about like how healing it is to be in sisterhood. Right. And so then I was in this mastermind, um, with 14 women, it was really intimate and, you know, very, very focused around feminine energy. And, um, So of course, you know, I'm just like a puddle crying like all the time, like during the retreats. And one of the other women came up to me and she's like, man, like I was so jealous of you the whole time at this retreat because like I really, really was desiring for that like emotional breakthrough. And she's like, and I just couldn't cry. And that was like so healing for me because I was like, here I was like looking at her being like, God, she's so composed. She's got it all together. Like, come on, why can't you be more like that? And she is wishing she could be more like me. Who's like losing it in front of everyone. So it's like just allowing ourselves to be who we are and not make that wrong. Yeah. And I think, well, the masculine programming of the world too is like, oh, well, she's loose, like loose cannon or like she's crazy or she needs medication or she has X, Y, Z. And like, I, when I got, I think I posted this yesterday. I like, I got my human design and I was like, I don't have ADHD. I'm just a manager that moves very fast. That is very emotional. And I was like, I feel like I just got a permission slip. Yeah. And not a prescription. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, oh my God, like I am perfect the way I am. I just need to find systems and processes around this messy and my messy is awesome. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Manny Jen over here too. You're like, I feel so seen. (laughs) But I'm going to go take a nap now. Bye. Am I hermit? (laughs) I'm so learning. This is so, it's just beautiful. And I'm grateful for you for 
you know, honestly, just like allowing me to be me. And like, while I still feel a little bit masculine or whatever, and I'm going to like learn into it, like, listen, I don't think I'm ever going to be wearing the dresses and like all of that, (laughs) but my energy will be there. Um, but I just appreciate the space and the love and support that you've provided and just you doing your mission is so inspiring. So we're doing good things. I I agree. Like I'm so inspired. I feel like I have the most incredible network of women and like it just keeps getting better and better and it's like you know man seeing you like living your mission seeing you showing up and you know using your voice and being brave enough to be seen and being brave enough to like claim your money story like i just really believe that each of these acts, like when you, when you put it all together, it changes the planet and it really, uh, I'm so inspired by it. Yeah. And I just feel that this is such a pivotal time for women to really rise and claim our power, but claim the way in the how that we want to have the power and, and the way that we want our lives to be and the way that we want to run our businesses. And it's just like such an honor to be doing it side by side with other women like you. Yeah. Same. Oh, this has been awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And I know that everyone listening is going to want to follow along with you as well. So what's the best place if they want to check you out your work or just follow along on your journey? I'm a bit, I'm big on Facebook. So you can, um, hopefully you can put it in the show notes cause no one will yeah. remember how to type my last name, but, um, it's Mandy Podlesny on Facebook. If you just want to, um, find me on my business page and then my personal page. Um, and then at more Mandy P on my Instagrams, um, and that's and mandyp.com mandyp.com i love it you're the best url <laughs> i know i don't think i was surprised somebody didn't take it but yeah i it's crazy and i had a distinction today too it was um i think melanie or amanda or somebody said something it was like once you evolve and like leave that old stuff behind like you'll step into a new power and i was like oh my god mandyp.com needs to launch like I mean it's long it's it's available and whatever I just need to start using it more you know redirecting so that was cool thing so I love it mandyp.com is there any like final parting words that you'd like to leave our audience with stop waiting till Monday to do the damn thing (laughs) that is what I say to a lot of people right like we always put it off like oh I'll just I'm gonna start Monday I'm gonna start Monday no just start slowly doing it and do the damn thing. That's my thing. (laughs) I love it. Do the damn thing. All right, Mandy, thank you so much. This has been such a joy. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. Changing the way we think, feel, and talk about money will change the world. I truly believe that. It starts with you tuning in and it spreads when you share this show on Instagram and Facebook and tag me at mmakesmoney. And you know what moves the needle the most? Taking just a minute to leave a five-star review on iTunes. This show isn't free to produce, so let's multiply those dollars invested to help this show reach a bigger audience each week. Thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate it. And lastly, if you want more connection, more M Makes Money style riffs, and a safe place on the internet to talk about money, jump into my free Facebook group, The Money Club. It's linked in the show notes. Until next time, I'm wishing you health, happiness, and boatloads of money. 